<clears throat> another barge, another bridge, another FEMA zone. Giving all praise, honor, and infinite glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash. Giving double honors unto the head apostles of the Great Millstone, who do rule well and teach well. Shalom unto the elders and the other bishops of the Great Millstone as well. Shalom, Shalom. So this is the Brother Ashamath back at you with another lesson. Lord willing, you find the lesson edifying. I don't write this out. I pray it's edifying. This lesson, I wanted to go into a few different topics because you got a lot that happened today. In the past 24 hours, a lot has happened. From Paris announcing that QR codes will be needed to move around the city. And that's a precursor of what's to come and happen in Babylon the Great. Going into this lesson, you had a barge hit a Texas bridge in Galveston in FEMA zone number six now what do you all have what do you have happened five days ago same thing in fema region number same thing different city different location but in fema region number seven in iowa you had a large a large barge crash into fort madison bridge in iowa what do you have happened a little while ago well you had the fire that happened you know in Ohio, around a major bridge, you had what happened out there in Baltimore, and that's in FEMA region number five. You have what happened in Baltimore as far as the bridge collapsing after a barge allegedly hit it, quote unquote, allegedly. And you've seen sparks flying around that same time. It looks like explosions in FEMA region number three. And then you have FEMA region number two, where you have basically the George Washington Bridge looking like it's on its last leg or looking, looking really, really frail. And these are all test runs done by the wicked elite because eventually America is going to be split up in 10 separate FEMA regions going into a prophecy that's talked about in the Holy Scriptures. Let's get this. You have, matter of fact, let's get it while it's hot. Second Ezra is 15 and let's keep that on deck. But let's get this. You have the UN troops to be deployed across the U.S. as Pentagon prepares for civil unrest. You have the World Economic Forum announced that they want to make cash illegal. You have the digital public infrastructure being rolled out in Europe in the form of these digital IDs that they want to connect to the payment system via WorldCoin and other payment systems that are connected to the grid. You have a major grocery store and supermarket chain out there in the United Kingdom that announced that they want to have basically people be chipped by the year 2169. And you know Esau Edom, he really means 2025. That's what he really means because you remember a few, a few years back, it was Agenda 2020. They wanted to have this done by 2020. And then it changed to Agenda 2030 and you have a lot of announcements being made as far as they want to get this and have this fully rolled out by next year. And the scriptures say that Esau Edom, he would move like this because literally he would be found out and he would have to move things into warp speed, move things into high gear. He would, they should be like mad men sparing none. And the stage is being set with these and I'll get to the scriptures in a second. It's locking from my ram. I just want to hit points as they're hot. With these protests, quote unquote, and I say quote unquote because it's being found out that these protests are staged events by George Soros and the wicked elite to implement civil unrest, to implement martial law, to implement another lockdown, to implement a system where you would have to register yourself and prove ID because of another boogeyman that they want to introduce and eventually the MOTB. And, sl and splitting the country up into 10 regions to kill two birds and one stone. And these bridge attacks, well, that's a, that's a method of cutting off the supply chain, creating a public scare as well. And Esau Edom, he's moving sloppy. It's just another bridge, 
another barge, and another FEMA zone. Those that have two eyes to eat, two eyes to see, and two ears to hear, and the spirit of discernment, we know what's up. And Barakat the Yahabashim Shai for the insight. Let's go into the book of Second Ezra 15. Matter of fact, we'll get Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. And we go over the same scriptures all the time as of late because these things need to be going over, going over, over and over because we're living in these times. So if you sound like a broken record, hey, go to the next channel. You know, there's somebody talking about some bullshit in another channel. We're talking about real stuff right here, man. We're talking about the scriptures, the word of the heavenly father. And, and so what if we sound like a broken record? These things are happening. The scriptures, the Lord said he will perform his words right before our very eyes in Ezekiel 12. He will no longer pro prolong the vision. And we're seeing the vision as far as the prophecy speaking loud and clear. The scriptures say, measure thou the time diligently. How do you measure the time? By what's going on on the earth and matching it up to the scriptures. Because the scriptures give a detailed insight on what's to happen in the world. And we're seeing those things happen real time. Real ting this, man. Like they say in Jamaica, real ting. Revelation 12 and 12, Salakia. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. And the heavens is symbolic for the whole for the elect. Because we're the only ones that are rejoicing in these things. Because all these things happening are signs that our Lord and his visitation physically and the salvation is near. The salvation of the whole for the elect. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea. Of the earth, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that means destruction, and of the sea. For the devils come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Why? Because he will be found out, and he will be he will be moving in desperation mode. Down 70 points spiritually, you know, on Madden with three minutes left. And the only choice that he has is to throw Hail Marys, man. And he's getting intercepted. People are finding him out. People are people are calling him out. You know, he's being pointed out as being insignificant. You know, the scriptures say in the book of uh, Obadiah, you know, thou, thou, let's get it real quick. I don't want to quote it. Obadiah. Obadiah one and one. And it reads. <clears throat> Yeah, thou art greatly despised. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, Yahweh Bashim and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let it rise up against her in battle. And what, what is the Lord doing? He's stirring, the, he's stirring up the spirits of these nations to come against Esau, Edom. And Esau to come against Esau. The Russians, those are Edomites. You know? And these uh these BRICS nations, well, they th the spirit is getting put on them to come against Babylon the Great, and eventually uh, ba Babylon's own allies are going to turn on on a turn are going to turn on her, man. All those European Union nations, they're going to turn on Babylon the Great, and burn her with fire. Obadiah one and two, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen; thou art greatly despised; thou art greatly despised. Yeah. And if you go into this word, small among the heathen, that word small goes into being insignificant, unimportant. You know? Being found out to be a liar. That's also, that's also being rolled out. Esau Edom is being found out to be a liar. You know? Starting with the, starting with the servants and prophets of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Because the scriptures say, in Salakia, this, this lesson is turning a totally different direction, but it's the spirit. Isaiah 25 and 7, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. These nations are being told who they are and their ways to their face, starting with Esau Edom, the main culprit. The covering cast is all the lies that Esau Edom has told the people, you know, starting with that image that he perpetuated around the world. Isaiah 25 and 7, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Growth, darkness, lies, deception. He's being found out to be the thief, the murderer, the bloody man, the robber, the jacker, you know. 
going around stealing the resources and playing the victim. But in the last days, he will be found out. Now, let's go back. Slack it. Second instance 15. It's like I get a little, I got a little off track, but let's go back to the, to, to, um, to this information. Cause sometimes, you know, we can get carried away in the spirit. So it's like it. So this is a, uh, another attack and another bridge. Second, this is 15 and 17. And what do you have being rolled out in Paris? Paris, parts of Paris will be off limits without a QR code this summer. Let's get this. The French capital Paris will be split into zones into zones sound familiar what do you have America being split uh, split up into in the form of a uh, national emergency well it's split up into, into 10 separate regions controlled by the Federal Emergency Management Association via the wicked elite the UN and the W to the is to the ISO the wicked elite you know because all these, these, uh, these, these, uh, the UN, the W to the is to the ISO, they're all shadow companies for the wicked elite, including America. They're all shadow companies of the greater corporation, you know, the, sh the shadow companies of the wicked elite. You know, you have Circo, and if you look into Circo, they own literally a lot of those companies, you know, grocery stores, you know, uh, entertainment chains, so on and so forth. So that's what the UN, the W to the is H to the ISO, the EU, they're all shadow companies. They're all minor companies or, or, uh, sub companies of the wicked elite. Let me say it like that. And that's second as 15 and 17 being rolled out right before your very eyes in the form of a test run. The scriptures say we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. You know, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, his wicked plans, his schemes, his plots, his trickery. You know, put on all the armor of Yahweh Bashim Shai that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the great accusation. Because this man is going to ramp up the accusations. You know, and call this this and call this that. But like a beloved elder say a long time ago, is the lie true? Is the lie true? You know, there is no lie of the truth. And we know the truth is the truth. And the Lord said, and you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So the hell with this devil and his lies and him coming in like a flood. Let's get Psalms 32 on deck. So come on, if you're going to make your moves, devil, come on. Come on, Cletus. This is Psalms 32. Get that on deck. <clears throat> this is 2nd Esther 15. 2nd Esther 15. It's lucky. The screen just... It looks kind of weird. Let me get... Let me type it up again. And I'll get a few more wrap on up, because... I just want to make this uh, this lesson quick, but sometimes we can get carried away in the spirit. This is second as of 15 and 17. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's start from 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Similar to what's said in the book of Revelation 12 and 12. You know, woe unto the earth and to the sea. Woe unto the world and them that dwell therein. Woe means destruction. And that's what's coming. For the sword and the destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. The one of their swords is the gun. And that's what's being set as far as the stage is being set for that in Babylon the Great. And the reason why they have to use these UN troops and these mercenaries is because America has the highest percentage of gun owners as far as any other country in the world. So they're going to have to use these mercenaries because, you know, these hillbillies and these uh, Joe six packs and these uh, and these diehard Americans, you know, proud to be an American type dudes. Well, they're going to fight against these. They're going to fight against these uh, these 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 mercenaries, man. You know. 
We're just going to trust in what Yahweh Bashim HaShai said. The Lord said he got us, man. You know, at famine and destruction, thou shalt laugh. Thou shalt not be afraid of the sword. Roughly paraphrasing the book of Job 5, you know. In famine, thou shalt have an abundance. Matter of fact, let's get that. How long have we been going? Okay, I don't want to make this too long. Job 5. Job 5. Let's go to the scriptures. Enough of my rambling. It's lucky. Second, this is 15. And 16. For there shall be sedition among men. What's sedition? Let's look it up. Simple Google definition. It's lucky. Come on. Come on, Cletus. It's lucky. My phone's acting up. Sedition. Sedition. Conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority or state of a monarch. And that's that's what's happening. The Lord is setting the stage for these things to happen because they're talked about in the Holy Scriptures. For there shall be sedition among men and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And what do you have happen today? A prime minister, you know, of, of a country, you know, close to the Ukraine and Russia area. And that, that president has ties to Hungary and Russia. Well, he got hit up. You know, he got hit up. And they say it's not life threatening, but that's a sign of things to come. That's a, that's a sign of the times to come. You know, because anybody who acts up or acts out, you know, they're going to be made public examples, you know, by the wicked elite. You know, and it's through and it's through the left hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Unless you have Yahweh Bashim Yahashai on your side, you're toasting these days, man. And our hope is that Yahweh Bashim Yahashai protects us and preserves us through these times, man. Second S is fifteen and seventeen. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And that prophecy is being wrought out rolled out right before our very eyes through these QR codes, through the digital public infrastructure, through facial recognition technology, through these smart cameras, 15 minute cities, smart zones, smart borders, and eventually smart technology that they want to put in your body to track you and track every single transaction in the form of the RFID and NFC microchip, which is the mark of the beast. And if you take it, you're going to be destroyed. This is the book of Job, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> in the twelfth verse, let's get this. We ain't got this in a while. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. And what's their enterprise? Their new world order. The, the Novus Ordo Secorium. If you look on the back of the dollar bill, that's the three words that you'll see. And that's Latin for he has crowned our enterprises of success. Job, Job 5 and 13. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. Yeah. He he taketh the wise in their own craftiness, man. You know, in the fullest, let's get that because it's down here. <clears throat> this is in the book of Job 20. This is in the book of Job, the 20th chapter. But let's get this. <clears throat> yeah. Job 5 and 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. And six troubles, six being the number of man, sex, or beast. When Esau Edom has that full rage and is moving in the spirit of the spiritual demon Satan at the highest capacity, because the scriptures say they shall be like madmen, sparing none. Well, the Lord is going to preserve you in that time. If you're, if you're one of his. This is, I think it's 2 Timothy Three, let's get that on deck. Yeah, now I'm at twelve, thirteenth verse. Yeah, yep. Woo, yep. <clears throat> let's get this. This is Joel five, Joel five, 
Man, this is Joel 5 and 15. That's, that's the spirit. And we're right to it. Joel 5 and 15. But he saveth the poor from the sword. Who's the poor? The hope for the elect. Because we have no standing army physically. You know? We're a spiritual army, but we have no standing army physically, man. You know, that's why the Lord calls us a worm. A worm is defenseless. You know? Physically. But we have, ultimately, the angels. Yahweh Bashim Shai, The word and the Holy Spirit. All we need as far as the spiritual survival kit. You know, and the, 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 the knowledge of the signs of the times in the future and the knowledge of what's going to happen in this nigga Esau, Edom. You, know, you know, why be afraid of a man that shall that shall die, man? That shall fade like the wind. This is Job 5 and 15. And he reads, but he saveth the poor from the sword and their mouth. But he saveth the poor from the sword from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. The slanderous tongue, and that's what Esau Edom has, you know. That shall be you should he he said uh in the book of Sirach 51, he's gonna keep us safe from safe from slander. Let's get that. Sirach 51, and it reads, Yeah. Sirach 51 and 2. Thou art my defender and helper, and hast preserved my body from destruction, and from the snare of the slanderous tongue, from the accuser of the brethren. And from the lips that forge lies and has been mine helper against mine adversaries. Yeah. That's exactly what he's going to do, man. Sirach 51 and 3. And has delivered me according to the multitude of thy mercies and greatness of thy name from the teeth of them that were ready to devour me. And what's Esau Edom's teeth? You know, his military. You know, his, his, uh, his, his, his military weaponry. The sword, you know. Sirach 51 to 3, and has delivered me according to the multitude of thy mercies and greatness of thy name from the teeth of them that were ready to devour me and out of the hands of such as sought after my life and from the manifold afflictions which I had. Yeah. Revelation 11. Because what's going to happen to Babylon the Great? Revelation 11 and 13. Because <clears throat> America is split up into 10 separate FEMA regions. And what's going to happen to these female regions eventually? Let's talk about it. Let's get 11 and 11. Because that ties in. Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. Into, into who? The hope of the elect. Because our people were dead from the neck up from 1619 to 1969. Around that time period. Late, you know, late 60s. When Abba Vivens broke off from the commandment keepers and started teaching... Through the spirit and poverty, how about Shema Shai out of the New Testament? Revelation 11 and 11. And we believe through the spirit and through prophecy that Abba Bivens was John the Baptist coming back. Because the scriptures talk about, I will send you, you know, Elijah the prophet before the coming of the Lord, before the dreadful day of the Lord, roughly paraphrasing. Elijah is John the Baptist. The Lord said it himself. You can read about that in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter. Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And that's what Esau Edom is afraid of, us standing upon our feet, professing who we are. Because that's a sign of him coming out of power. That's a sign of him and his demise, us waking up, the dead body getting off the ground. And saying and pointing at and pointing at the guy who who, who ultimately afforded the who afforded the affliction, man. Pointing out the bloody man. You know, Satan, Shatan, the deceiver, the old serpent, the crooked serpent. Revelation eleven and eleven. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And that's what is being rolled out through these unrighteous decrees. You know, the Shalom Act, you know, the, the anti-Sim Acts. That's great fear falling upon them with saw us, man. The dreadful, dre dreadful fear. That dreadful sound that's in his ear. The report. Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. That's, that's what you want to hear upon uh, the Lord's return. Come up hither. But some are going to be martyrs, man. We got to give you a, we got to give you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Some are going to be martyrs. 
Some are actually going to have to be brought before the kings and, and, and the judges and the rulers to cuss them out and to tell them, chop my head off, man. To hell with y'all. You know? So be it. That's your lot, so be it. That's my lot, so be it. Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up into and they sent it up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the enemies beheld them. And they were amazed at the strangeness of the salvation of the elect. They are going to be amazed at the strangeness of the salvation of the elect. Revelation 11 and 13. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake. Because when the Lord comes, the earth's going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. From the, all the missiles that are going to hit this place. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake. And the tenth part of the city fell, talking about the ten female reasons that are in Babylon the Great. And then and then the earthquake were slain of men, seven thousand, a complete number of men, seven is the number of completion, and the remnant were affrighted, the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the power of heaven, and gave glory to Yahweh Bashim Shai, who saved us out of the affliction and out of the persecution and out of the destruction and out of these bodies. At this wicked sinful kingdom. This is Psalms 32. It's lucky. I was trying to end this a little earlier, but we'll get a few more wrap on up. Lord willing, you find it edifying and comforting. This is Psalms 32 and 5 and 6. And it reads Psalms 32, 6 and 7. And it reads For this, everyone that is godly. Pray unto thee, for this shall, for this shall everyone that is godly, the hopeful elect, pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. They shall not come nigh unto him. You know? When in the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's the right hand. That's the counter. When Esau Edom comes in like a flood against the hope of the elect, well, the Lord is going to unleash that spiritual power, man. The, the angels, you know, miracles. You know, you're going to get some of us, you know, just so we can cuss you out and give you a face-to-face -face curse out, man. You know, and tell you how the Lord is going to fuck you up in the kingdom, man. So you're going to see some of us face-to-face. -face. That's prophecy. And that's for the gospel's sake, man. This is Psalm 32 and 6. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Give ear, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. Bow down thine ear. Matter of fact, let's get that. Psalms 86 and 1. And it reads Psalms 86 and 1. Bow down thine ear, O Yahweh Bashim Shai. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. What of salvation? Of, of, of the garments of salvation, the understanding. You know? Yep. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my power, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Save thy servant that trusteth in thee. In the report, this is Psalm 32 and 6, and, you, and it reads, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and my iniquity. Psalms 32 and six, like it, that was five. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Let's get it, since we're being long with Let's get Isaiah 59 and 19. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashai, shall lift up a standard against him. That word spirit goes into the, the Hebrew word racha. And if you go into that word spirit, it goes into all sorts of beautiful definitions. You know? Departing warlike energy. That's what the spirit of the Heavenly Father is, the Holy Spirit. It's warlike energy. If you, read, if you read the scriptures in different accounts, it'll say the spirit came upon this man mightily. And what? He got to tearing shit up, man. You know, Samson, David. 
you know, uh, uh, Elijah, you know, different accounts where, where the spirit came upon men, they were able to do mighty acts through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, perform spiritual power, raise them, raise people from the dead, you know, the spirit of being a polyglot, you know, speaking multiple languages, so on and so forth, you know, the gift of tongues, which is speaking different languages. It's not that, that, that shit that they do in the Christian church. You know, blah, 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 blah. that's not, that's not, that's not speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is speaking in a different language. Back to, let's, let's get this one and wrap on up. So like it totally went a different direction, but hey, it's all good. Lord willing, you find it edifying. This is the last precept. I'm going to close on out right here. This is second Timothy, the third chapter <clears throat> and the 11th verse and the 12th verse. And it reads, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. If you go into what happened to Paul when he went to those cities, he was stoned. You know, he was stoned. And they dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead. And the Lord uh, brought him to the spirit world for a second. You know? And he put the spirit back in him. And then Paul got his ass back up and went to go do the work again. After he got stoned. If you go into the account, I think it's in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. You know, let's make sure. Let's make sure. Let's double check. 22nd, 20, 20, 20, uh, 20th or 22nd verse. If my internet's jacked up. I can, I get the sword. I got the sword right next to me. Let's double check. Let's fact check that. Okay. And that's working again. Second Corinthians. Uh, it's in the book of Corinthians for sure. Stone Paul. Acts. Tripping. It's in the book of Acts, so not Corinthians, Acts. I remember the, the chapter, though. This is Acts 14. And you can read about this in Acts 14. Yeah. Yep. You can read about this in Acts 14. But let's go back. This is... Uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 11 and 12, and it reads, Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endure, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. But out of them all the Lord delivered him, man. What, what's said in the book of 2 Ezra? The Lord requires the elect from among the number. From among, from among the number of Israelites. You know, second as is the second chapter. I think it's two and twenty six. Yeah, the Wadi Al Bashim Al Shai. For as for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall none of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. You know, you the, the even those who have to give up this body because there's no such thing as real death. You go to the spirit world. You know. Your, your your spirit, that's something that lives for. That's a, that's a uh, your spirit lives forever. You know. You have to give up the. You have to give up this body. You know when you die, but when you uh, pass on, better yet, you know, the body dies. The spirit lives forever. And the elect, they're gonna have. They're gonna. They're gonna inherit everlasting life. You know, rulership and dominion forever. A prolong kingdom and rulership over the heathen you know dominion thrones scepters the whole nine and forever to enjoy paradise as for the servants whom i have given thee there shall none of them perish for i will require them from among thy number for i will require them from among thy number yeah be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh others shall weep and be sorrowful Isaiah 65, thou shall be, but thou shall be merry and have an abundance. What a wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And eventually, 
in, in Jacob's trouble, you're going to have some brothers who actually have an abundance of supplies, you know, food to share with the brethren or to share with their family, you know, or they may be alone and they may have to, you know, rough it out for, you know, two, three, four, five months. We don't know how these things are, are going to play out. I'm just naming scenarios. You know, we see that moves are being made in the earth and it's through Yahweh Bashim Shai through the left hand. So fret not, fear not, fear not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Where's the fear of the oppressor? <laughs> Where's the fear of the oppressor going to be when he's destroyed? You know, he can huff and puff, but this is a house that he can't blow down, man. This is. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3 and 11, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that live godly in Hamashiach, Yahweh shall suffer persecution. So you are brought in this troop to be purged out, you know, of the impurities and to suffer, you know, and to eventually be rewarded for the suffering. But. It's going to come with ultimately surviving these times that are written about in the Holy Scriptures, which is the hour of temptation, Jacob's trouble, which is like a time, which is like a time, it, 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 nothing, nothing can be compared to what's coming. You know, it's going to get so bad that the Lord's going to have to send his, uh, his forces in the form of. Daniel 12 and 1 he's going to have to he's going to have to send Michael you know Daniel 12 and 1 and at that time shall Michael stand up Michaela you know who is like the most high that's what it means in the Hebrew that's what it means his name in the Hebrew is Michaela and it means who is like the most high cuz he's the top angel on the right hand side underneath Yahweh Shai, who's the captain of heaven's armies. Yahweh Shai is the captain of the hosts of heaven's armies. And he's coming back with Michael, you know, and the rest of the angels, man. But before that, actually, um, but, it, but, it, but it, it's going to get so bad out here, the Lord's going to have to send Michael, you know. And you're going to have certain instances where miracles happen, you know. For a testimony, you know. But let's wrap on up right here. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Who? Those who are acquired from among the number, you know, from among the number of Israelites on the earth. The whole for the elect who are being gathered through the word. Comforted, spiritually guided, you know, inspired, built up, motivated, broken down, you know, uh, you know, broken down as far as the impurities that are out of that, that, that are in us that need to be melted away, purged out, being purged out, you know, being cussed out from time to time when we fuck up, you know. Daniel 12 and 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. What, the book of life, man. And that's what this, that's what this uh, doctrine is. It's a doctrine of, of, it's a doctrine of life. You know, it, it gives you life. It rejuvenates you, invigorates you, makes you makes you alive. You know, illuminates you. The scriptures say, "Wisdom maketh a man's face to shine, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation." The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So, with that, uh, Lord willing, you were edified. Slack you. The lesson took a totally different direction. I wanted to talk about. Um, these things which I covered through the spirit, which we covered through the spirit and uh, ultimately it turned into, you know, hopefully something beautiful and edifying and comforting. So with that, I'm going to end it. Lord willing, you were edified in the closing. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak, with double honors. 
and to the head apostles of the great millstone who do rule well and teach well. Shalom and to the elders and the elder bishops of the great millstone as well. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Also, and to the brothers of great millstone and the affiliate camps. Shalom, shalom. And until next time, next lesson, next camp session. Adon Rathaza, Shalom, Ba 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 Ba. Soon. Soon, soon, soon. Shalom, shalom.